Assalamu alaikum everyone, hope you all are doing well. If you are new here, a very warm welcome to you. Today in this video, I'm going to talk to you about Plasmodium. So let's get into the video. At the end of this lecture, you'll be able to describe the introduction of Plasmodium, its classification, its morphology, life cycle, habitat in transmission, its epidemiology, pathogenesis, clinical findings, lab diagnosis, its treatment, immunity developed against it, and how to prevent it and how to control its spread. Plasmodium belongs to the genus of the class of sporozoa and is responsible for causing malaria. It is a type of protozoa, a single-celled organism that is able to divide only within a host cell. It is a blood and tissue parasite. It means that it infects the blood cells, uh, including the erythrocytes, and it also infects the tissue cells, for example, hepatocytes. Once the plasmodium enters the bloodstream, it infects and destroys mainly liver cells, the hepatocytes, and red blood cells, the erythrocytes, and causing a variety of symptoms and even death. Malaria is primarily caused by four plasmodia. Plasmodium avivax, Plasmodium ovale, Plasmodium malariae, Plasmodium falciparum. Plasmodium vivax and Plasmodium falciparum are most common causes of malaria than Plasmodium ovale and malaria. Plasmodium vivax is most widely distributed and Plasmodium falciparum causes the most serious disease. A fifth species, Plasmodium noasi, is found in Southeast Asia and it is also responsible for causing malaria. Worldwide, malaria is one of the common infectious diseases and one of the leading causes of death. Morphology of Plasmodium, it has different stages. Let's start with the first one that is sporozoid, a stage of development of Plasmodium. It is asexual form and is introduced into human's skin by the bite of Anopheles female mosquito via its proboscis. It has a narrow shape, it is slightly curved organism and is taper at both ends. It is 12 micrometers in length. Its nucleus is central and elongated. It has no pigment and it, is, it has slightly undulating movement. Next stage is tissue chazant. This is asexual form and it grows and multiplies in parenchymal cells of liver. Different forms of plasmodium give rise to different tissue chazants. For example, for plasmodium vivax, the tissue chazant is round 42 micrometers in diameter. Its nucleus is divided into fragments and is surrounded by a little cytoplasmic form. And it forms 12 thousand merozoids and for plasmodium ovale uh, its tissue chazons are oval 75 micrometers in length 45 micrometers in breadth and it forms about 15,000 merozoids for plasmodium malariae the tissue chazons are round about 22 micrometers and it forms about 2,000 merozoids and for plasmodium falciparum the tissue chazons are oval, about 16 to 30 micrometers, and it forms about 40,000 merozoids. Next stage is tissue merozoids. It is also asexual form. It is liberated after the rupture of mature tissue chazons. It is round in shape and it has a nucleus that is enclosed in a little cytoplasm and it is about 0 0.7 to 1.8 micrometers in length. And the another stage is trophozoids. These are asexual forms and are also the growing forms of parasite, the plasmodium, in the blood of human beings. There are two types of trophozoites, the small trophozoites and the large trophozoites. Next stage is a blood chazons. These are asexual forms and are involved in asexual multiplication of the plasmodium that occurs in human beings. The next one is blood merozoites. 
These are asexual forms being the products of division by schizogony, are round in shape, having a nucleus enclosed in a little cytoplasm. The last stage is gametocytes. Sexual form of plasmodium, one is male, also called microgametocyte. It has a pale blue cytoplasm and a large diffuse nucleus. And the other one is female or macrogametocyte that has dark blue cytoplasm and a small complex nucleus. Life cycle of plasmodium. There are two phases in the life cycle. First one is the sexual cycle, which occurs primarily in mosquitoes and the other one is asexual cycle, which occurs in humans, the intermediate hosts. The sexual cycle is also called sporogony because sporozoids are produced in this cycle. And the asexual cycle is also called schizogony because schizons are made in this cycle. There are other two phases in asexual cycle, the exoerythrocytic phase and the erythrocytic phase. The exoerythrocytic phase occurs in the hepatocytes, liver cells, and the erythrocytic phase occurs in the red blood cells. The life cycle in humans begins with the introduction of sporozoids into the blood from the saliva of biting mosquito. The sporozoids are taken up by hepatocytes within 30 minutes. Sporozoids enter the parenchymal cells of liver, grow into tissue schizonts, via pre-erythrocytic schizogony or exoerythrocytic schizogony. Over the next one to two weeks, Plasmodium falciparum, Plasmodium malariae, and Plasmodium noasi multiply asexually and mature from sporozoid to merozoids, while the host cells die. Merozoids are liberated on rupture of schizons about 7th to 8th day of the bite, the mosquito bite, and enters into bloodstream. In contrast, over the few months to years, Plasmodium ovale and Plasmodium vivax enter into a dormant hepatic phase where they are called hypnozoids, Hypnozoids do not divide. Instead, they snooze before entering the process of schizogony, causing a long delay between initial infection and the symptoms of a disease. Here, they are responsible for the cause of relapses. When merozoids are released from the liver cells, they infect the red blood cells. Here, the erythrocytic phase starts. In the organism, the plasmodium differentiates into a ring-shaped trophozoid. The ring form grows into an amoeboid form and then differentiates into schizont filled with merozoids. After release, the merozoids infects other erythrocytes. The cycle in the red blood cells repeats at regular intervals, typically for each species. The periodic release of merozoids causes the typical recurrent symptoms of chills, fever, sweat scenes in malaria patients. There are three stages in erythrocytic phase. In the first stage, early trophozoid or ring form is formed. In the second stage, this trophozoid grows and becomes the late trophozoid. In the third stage, this trophozoid grows by digesting hemoglobin, leaving behind the hemozoin, and this is now called a schizont. This is also the replicative phase because the parasite undergoes mitosis, differentiates into merozoids, gets released into the blood and infects other erythrocytes and the cycle is repeated all over again. The sexual cycle begins in human red blood cells where some merozoids develop into male and others develop into female gametocytes and the gametocytes containing red blood cells are then ingested by female Anopheles mosquito and then the mosquito cycle starts. The female Anopheles mosquito ingests both sexual and asexual forms during its blood meal. The asexual forms are destroyed in gut while sexual forms survive. In the mid gut of the female Anopheles mosquito, a female macrogamete and eight sperm-like male microgametes are formed. Fertilization occurs to form a zygote and it occurs about 20 to 120 minutes after the blood meal. After fertilization, in next 24 hours, zygote differentiates into a motile okinite. 
that burrows into the gut wall, where it grows into an oocyst within which many haploid sporozoites are produced. The sporozoites are released and they migrate to salivary glands. Ready to complete the cycle when the mosquito takes her next blood meal. Here is the diagrammatic representation of uh, the plasmodium that how it leads to the malaria. There are two cycles as we have discussed. One is the asexual cycle and the other one is the sexual cycle. The cycle begins when a mosquito takes a blood meal and injects the sporozoites. Remember, mosquito injects the sporozoites, not the murozoites. The hypnozoites from the blood will migrate towards the liver cells and then they will infect the liver cells, the actual hepatocytes. Then they will lead to the formation of cisons and this will lead to the formation of mirozoites and then the rupture cisons will release the mirozoite. This is actually human liver stages and we can call it exoerythrocytic cycle or pre-erythrocytic cycle because it is not occurring inside the red blood cells, the erythrocytes. Okay, when the mirozoites will be released, they will go and infect the human blood cells. This here, the human blood stage has begun. After the infection, the mirozoites will form trophozoites. The immature trophozoites, or also the ring stage, will go on two ways. First one, then they that these uh, trophozoites will get mature and they will form cisons, and again this red blood cell will rupture. The released mirozoites will infect other erythrocytes, and the cycle will repeat all over again. And the other way is that immature trophozoites will convert into gametocytes. They are not here the male and female. They will get converted into male and female in the mid gut of the mosquito. Here they are just released in the blood and the mosquito will bite the human being and will take its blood meal and will ingest these gametocytes. Right here the mosquito cycle begins. The female gametocyte is macrogametocyte and the male gametocyte is microgametocyte. And there are eight male microgametocytes are formed. These enter into macrogametocyte and fertilize it and forms the zygote. The zygote gets converted into ookinite, the ookinite gets converted into oocyst and then the oocyst is ruptured and releases these sporozoites. And then these sporozoites are distributed to the different parts of the mosquito's body, especially to the salivary glands. And then the mosquito can infect the human being, this is how the cycle is going to be repeated all over again. The sporozoite is the infective and diagnostic stage, while the trophozoite and schizons and the gametocytes are the diagnostic stages. Next up is habitate in transmission. There are two hosts. First one is intermediate, that is human beings for the plasmodium because the parasite resides in the liver cells, the hepatocytes and the red blood cells and reproduce asexually. And the other one is definitive host. The female Anopheles mosquito is definitive host. Transmission of the plasmodium occurs via inoculation. That is why the bite of the mosquito across the placenta in blood transfusions and in IV drug abusers. Epidemiology Worldwide, malaria is one of the most common lethal infectious diseases affecting 200 million people and one of the leading causes of death, that is 1 million deaths per year. Serious global health problem affects millions, affects young children under 5 years old, pregnant women, patients with other conditions like AIDS, travelers with no prior exposure to malaria. Tropical and subtropical regions are hit the hardest together with most affected regions from the malaria belt. Malaria belt is a broad band that includes Latin America, Sub-Saharan Africa, South Asia, Southeast Asia. Pathogenesis and clinical findings. Infective agent for malaria is porozoites. 
and the inf incubation period varies for different types of plasmodium. For plasmodium vivax and plasmodium falciparum, it is about 10 to 15 days. For plasmodium ovale, it is about 15 to 20 days. And for plasmodium malaria, it is about 28 days. Most of the pathologic findings of malaria result from the destruction of red blood cells. Red blood cells are destroyed both by the release of merozoites and by the action of spleen to first sequester the infected red blood cells and then to lyse them. The enlarged spleen characteristic of malaria is due to congestion of sinusoids with erythrocytes coupled with hyperplasia of lymphocytes and macrophages. Malaria caused by Plasmodium falciparum is more severe than that caused by other Plasmodia. It is characterized by infection of far more red blood cells than other malarial species and by occlusion of capillaries with aggregates of parasitized red blood cells. This leads to life-threatening hemorrhage and necrosis, particularly in the brain, so we can call it cerebral malaria. Furthermore, extensive hemolysis and kidney damage occur with resulting hemoglobin urea. The dark color of patient's urine has given rise to term black water fever. The hemoglobin urea can lead to acute renal failure. Timing for fever cycle is 72 hours for plasmodium malaria and 42 hours for other plasmodia. Diseases caused by plasmodia are divided into cotton malaria, that recurs every fourth day and tertian malaria that recurs every third day and it is further classified into benign and malignant. Plasmodium vivax is responsible for benign tertian malaria. Plasmodium ovale is responsible for causing benign tertian malaria. Plasmodium malaria is responsible for cotton malaria and plasmodium falciparum is responsible for causing Malignant tertian malaria. Plasmodium vivax uses a specific erythrocyte receptor called Duffy antigen. Individuals with sickle cell anemia lack that receptor and has too little ATPase activity, so cannot produce much energy to support the growth of a parasite. So, sickle cell anemia is protective against malaria. Other diseases like thalassemia, G6PD deficiency make parasite infected cells more susceptible to dying from oxidative stress. Despite a downside of these diseases, there is an upside that these diseases provide against malaria. Mosquitoes are drawn to carbon dioxide and bodily smells when they hunt for blood meal in the evening and night. Plasmodium ovale and Plasmodium falciparum invades red blood cells of all ages, while Plasmodium vivax invades reticulocytes which are young and immature red blood cells, and Plasmodium malaria and Plasmodium noasi prefer to invade older red blood cells. Clinical findings that a malaria patient presents. First one is fever with abrupt onset accompanied by chills, headache, myalgias and arthralgias continues early in the disease for several days after onset. Fever spikes can reach 41 degrees Celsius accompanied by shaking chills, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain and this fever is also followed by drenching sweats. Splenomegaly is seen in most patients and hepatomegaly occurs in roughly one-third. Anemia is prominent. Untreated malaria caused by Plasmodium falciparum is potentially life-threatening as a result of extensive brain, cerebral malaria, and kidney, black water fever damage. Malaria caused by other three Plasmodia is usually self-limited with a low mortality rate. However, relapses of Plasmodium vivax and Plasmodium ovale malaria can occur up to several years after the initial illness as a result of hypnozoids latent in the liver. As we've discussed in the life cycle about the dormant phase, Lab diagnosis. We will collect specimens like blood, serum, urine. Diagnosis rests on microscopic examination of blood using both thick and thin gymza stained smears. The thick smear is used to screen for the presence of organisms and the thin smear is used for species identification. It is important to identify the species because the treatment of different species 
can differ. We will visualize trophozoites and gametocytes under the microscope. Next is culture. Culture helps in differentiating small trophozoites of Plasmodium vivax and Plasmodium falciparum. Blood count. Normocytic anemia, transient leukocytosis initially, subsequently leukopenia with monocytosis. If more than 5% of red blood cells are parasitized, the diagnosis is usually Plasmodium falciparum malaria. Ring-shaped trophozoites can be seen under microscope within infected red blood cells. Uh, I'm talking about a microscopy here, right? The gametocytes of Plasmodium falciparum are crescent-shaped, banana-shaped, whereas those of other Plasmodia are spherical. Don't forget that. Serology. It is done in high endemic areas for detecting latent infection in blood donors. Urinalysis. We do this for the presence of proteins and casts in urine of children with Plasmodium malaria, malaria identification. Finally, how to treat the malaria. The main criteria for choosing drugs is severity of a disease. And number two, resistance of the organism to chloroquine. And that is determined by geographical location. Drugs commonly used to treat malaria. Here is a table showing the species and which drug are go we going to use for the treatment and which route are we going to follow. If the species is chloroquine sensitive plasmodium falciparum and plasmodium malaria, the drug will be chloroquine and we will give this orally. If the species is chloroquine sensitive plasmodium vivax and plasmodium ovale, we will treat this with chloroquine plus primaquine. We'll prescribe them orally, but make sure if the patient is G6PD, the glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficient, then do not prescribe primaquine. If the species is chloroquine resistance plasmodium falciparum and the infection is uncomplicated malaria, then cortim and malaron are going to be prescribed orally. If the species is chloroquine resistant plasmodium falciparum and the infection is severe complicated malaria, then artesunate or quinidine is going to be used and we will give this intravenously, IV, right? Malfoquine or equinine and the combination of primethamine and sulfadoxine, the fancider, for chloroquine resistant strains of plasmodium falciparum can be used. Pacific or echoid immunity is developed, which may either be active or passive against the malaria. Partial immunity based on humoral antibodies uh, that block the merozoids from invading the red blood cells occur in infected individuals. A low level of parasitemia and low-grade symptoms result. This condition is called premonition. Prevention and control. Chemoprophylaxis of malaria for travelers to areas where chloroquine resistant Plasmodium falciparum is endemic consists of malfoquine or doxycycline, a combination of atroquine and progunil. In a fixed dose can also be used. Chloroquine should be used in areas with Plasmodium falciparum is sensitive to that drug. Travelers to areas where the other three plasmodia are found should take the chloroquine starting two weeks before arrival in the endemic area and continuing for four weeks after leaving the endemic area. This should be followed by a two-week course of primaquine if exposure was high. Primaquine will kill the hypnozoids or plasmodium vivax and plasmodium ovale. Other preventive measures include the use of mosquito netting, window screens, protective clothing, and insect repellents. The mosquitoes feed from dusk to dawn, so protection is particularly important during night. Communal preventive measures are directed against reducing the mosquito population. Many insecticide sprays such as DDT are no longer effective because the mosquitoes have developed resistance. Drainage of stagnant water in swamps and ditches reduces the breeding areas. There is no vaccine developed to treat the malaria. Question from today's lecture. 
Regarding Plasmodium species, which one of the following is most accurate? Stop the video and reply to that question. Till next time, Allah Hafiz.